Hey there, Nick with CC Minis here, and today, I've got a bag of tricks. In this episode, this is going to be a treat. I'm going to show you how I turned this dollar store Halloween decoration into this. A life-size servo skull. And unlike my 21st birthday celebration, I won't be doing this alone. I'm lucky enough to be collaborating with Narb Mix, Tinu with Cajun Craftastrophe, Dark Matter Workshop, and Bill Making Stuff. I'm really excited, although <laughs> I kind of think they're up to something. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got in this bag of tricks. Or was it treats? Get it? This hooded skeleton decoration was only $6 at the dollar store, and it's going to be the leading act of our build. I also found these sweet little extending cylinder things. They make this really awesome noise when you start to extend them or squish them back together. Plus, they make themselves disappear. I also found this lamp, which I'm going to try to use to make the servo skull's eyes light up, and it's also got this sweet clip thingy, so once I'm done, I can attach it anywhere I want. Okay, first thing we gotta do is extract the skull from this hood. Easy enough. Unfortunately, this skull has worse mold lines than a Forge World model, so I'm gonna have to take some time with a razor and clean this puppy up. I didn't get it perfect, but I mean, whatever. Next up was trying to break into this lamp to get to its juicy innards. Uh, Nick. Oh, hey, what's up, Bill? That doesn't look like it's from the pound shop, or, or even the Dollar Tree. How, how did you know that? Well, I know everything from the pound shop. You know, I know absolutely everything they produce because, you know, they produced me. I'm from the pound shop. Okay, there. Well, it, it was on clearance. Clearance, Th Nick. Clearance. Clearance from where? Tar Target. I, I got it from Target. It, it was... It was only seven dollars. Make me sick. Oh God! What have I done? Very disappointed. I'm so sorry. Whatever. Bye, Nick. It's working. It's working. Yay. All right, so I need to put this light thing inside of this skull. Perfect. Started out by giving Scully here a left eye lobotomy. That's the correct usage of that term, right? Then I cut in a nice access hole in the bottom of the skull where the neck hole usually go. I quickly figured out though that I couldn't fit my fat fingers inside the neck hole so I added another access port on the side of the skull. So I foolishly tried to seal the neck hole hole with hot glue alone. This was a mistake, as you'll see uh, pretty quickly here. This eyepiece was originally the cap for a fruit pouch thing that my son loves to devour. Seriously, you won't need anything else. It's a bit of a problem. To change the color of the eye lights, I used these photo transparencies. And trust me, you don't need any measurements. You can just eyeball it. Get it? Oh. Well, maybe eyeballing it wasn't the best idea. Noticing the neck hole hole was just a little bit flimsy, I decided to add in a leftover bit from a kid's toy scratch build. I decided to use super glue for some reason. This was another mistake. When I tried to add that eyeball piece back in, I, uh, I broke the whole thing. Oh, uh, hey, Tinu. Whoa, that was crazy. At least breaking the project while building the project makes it more interesting because we get to watch you fix it. You know, it really shows that anyone can make a mistake and we uh, know- Uh, hey, hey, Tinu? Yes, Nick? I forgot to hit the record button while I fixed oh. this. Nick. Sorry. My plan is to use some uh, some wooden skewers to hold the LED in place. Maybe it'll give it a little bit more strength. Maybe now is a good time to check in with my electrical guru. Hey Narp, can you uh, can you take a look at this? Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, no, that that doesn't look the safest. 
Really? Does does it look that bad? Are you familiar with the term highly combustible? Yeah, co I, combustible what? I, I think I've heard that before. Well, I wouldn't turn it on in my house, but you do you, Nick. Oh, well, okay, I'm I'm gonna roll with it. Thank, thanks, Narb. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. All right, well, now that I've got the electrical all clear by NARB, I kind of want to cover up this access port. It's, um, well, it's a giant hole in the side of his skull, so uh, we're gonna fix that. I had a couple different contenders for this, but I ended up landing on a bit that I've had for a long, long time. It's the lint trap from an old portable washing machine that my wife and I used to use because we were sick of going to a bank to get quarters every week. Since I was having so much trouble with the glues earlier, I decided to screw this on, make it a little bit more secure. By the way, if you've enjoyed this video so far and want to secure its position within the algorithm, how about you go down and hit that like button. Thanks. Next up, I wanted to add in a big cable port to the back of the skull. So I used the cone diffuser thingy from the LED lamp that I broke apart earlier. I screwed that on as well. Again, glue has not been treating me well today. You want a new rhyme? Well, it's tube time. I'm going to affix a bunch of different tubes to different places on the servo skull. Cause that's just how servo skulls do. They got tubes. Everywhere. Because I'm a sucker for punishment, I decided to use some hot glue again. It worked out okay. Next up was adding in an antenna, which was the plastic tube from the inside of a spray bottle. To make it a bit more antenna-y and a bit less tube I ripped out of a spray bottle-y, I affixed some beads to the end. Then it was time to bring out the old bits box and find some nice greeblies. I found a couple cool plastic parts that'll look good added on to the different parts of the skull. Then a smallish circuit board that I ripped out of a child's toy. I think I can attach this right to the side of the skull. Despite my better judgments, I kept using the hot glue gun because, well, it's really fast. And at this scale, I don't really mind the mess that accompanies it. I don't know why, but I really like the aesthetic of things coming out of eyes. It's probably a side effect of listening to too much of My Chemical Romance in high school. I attached some spare computer cables to the eye and then gave them a nice French braid before cutting off the excess and affixing that to another part of the skull. Now it's time to get into the finer details. I added little wiry dos everywhere around the skull to make it seem interconnected. I also built this little drill bit thing on the arm using these steampunk themed gear trinkets. They're pretty cool. To house the drill bit, I cut a little section of a pen and just kind of slid it in there. And here is the servo skull before I took the time to prime it. Now is a great time for me to shout out my patrons. Not Nick's wife, Sanctus Ledum, Clay Wilson, 
Carl makes things and uh um Gert? Nick, come on man. Wait. It's Gert. You mean hurt? It's Gert with a G. Like a cat trying to cough up a hairball. Gert. Hurt. Gert. 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 Hurt. Oh my god. <laughs> make him stop, Het. somebody, please Hot. make him stop. Hoot. Gert? Uh, thanks for the support. Alright, let's 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 paint this puppy up. First thing I did was take it outside and give it a prime all over with blue. And then I tried to just hit the skull parts with a ivory color. Then it was time to take a slightly brighter ivory color and hit up all the highlights. Then I took some sepia ink through the airbrush and started to build out the shadows, shooting it mostly from underneath in almost a reverse centerfall, but focusing on the recesses and areas that I wanted to be darker. After that, I wanted to bring some more definition into the tooths. At first, I tried to recess shade, but that took forever, and honestly, it looked like hard garbage. So, it's about time for that g g g g wash wash this is the remnants from a nice gouache wash that I made a few weeks ago that I can easily reactivate with water. I didn't add too much water though, because I want it to be nice and pasty thick. This way, when it pools in the recesses, it is very opaque. I hit the teeth and a whole bunch of little cracks and crevices on the skull. As always, I patiently waited for this to dry. before reprimanding the skull for not brushing at least twice a day. Look, he hasn't been flossing at all. Disgusting. If you're not familiar with gouache wash, it's kind of like an oil wash, but instead of reactivating with mineral spirits, it reactivates with just water. I used a wet q-tip to selectively remove the wash that I did not want, leaving it only in the cracks and crevices. Oh, and of course, between his teeth. Yum. To make the tubes look a little more tuby, I painted them a tube color, which was a mixture between a green, a blue, and a gray. Next up, I painted all the metal bits with a medium brightness silver color. And then I used a darker silver to fill in the recesses and to give the steel some shadows. I didn't like how weirdly shaped and obvious his cleft was, so I drilled a hole in his chin, tried to heat up the plastic, and used this poker thing to push it out. This didn't really work due to the fact that it was a bad idea. Then I started to paint the details. The circuit board I repainted green, because that's a good circuit board color, and then I started to repaint all the metal bits metal. Um, I may have uh, been better off not painting this stuff. Oh well. To add a little bit of further detail, I painted some wires red and some wires a darker version of that tubey color that I made up earlier. The last thing to do was to airbrush the fruit pouch cap a silver color, remove the sticky tack that I nimbly shoved in his eye hole, and then pop in his eye. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for... Hey, what, what are those guys up to? Well, here are some final video clips of the Servo Skull, and you know what, let's, let's go see what those guys are doing. That's That sounds ridiculous. Oh.
great. Real mature, guys. Real mature. If you haven't seen the other guys' videos yet, go check them out after this. They made some really, really cool stuff. Until next time, everyone. Stay healthy and take care. Bye-bye. I leave you a lot alone for one minute. <sighs>